fix of it in time and plotted it. He was a physicist and in two and a half, over a two and a half second period. And you can see it's a it's free fall. That's what that building did. And our red simulation points are very much on top of that, just to kind of give you an idea. So what about the collapse? We evaluate numerous progressive collapses hypotheses, but we found it in not experience a progressive collapse, and yet we also then determined that it was going to be a global collapse. So the first global collapse simulation in perspective one is about what we're ready to look at. The simulation was done to compare with the collapse footage, and the collapse we're looking at right now is basically all the interior core columns were taken out at 413. We need eight stories below that to provide space for that building to fall without, without being resisted. So floor 13, we took those out. 1.3 seconds later, we took out the exterior, all the exterior columns at that floor. That's what about you get about ready to see. This is the still of that. This is what's going on. Looking like a What you see on the left is our simulation. What you see on the right is Okay. First global collapse simulation in perspective two. So we're going to look at it from a little bit different direction. Simulation was done to compare with the collapse footage, and this again was set at floor 13. So here, we're going here to it is. Videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. Okay, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go back up to here. I want you to be aware that uh, when we started, I, we noticed that NIST did this, and we we did it, it we did it too. So the question is, this penthouse starts coming down first, and because it, it coming it's coming down first, what is causing that to happen? And we determined column seventy nine and eighty. Was, was causing it to, to fail. Remember, we spent a lot of time at column 7980. So we then took it out at floor 13, just like other people did. And then I began to ask the question, what if we took it out up here? What if we took it out up here? What if we took it out up here? And we, we, were, we were not able to get the time simulation to work until we started getting higher and higher. So right here, when you watch this video, it's about floor 43. But, we, if, 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 but I took it all the way up to 45, and we were almost dead on to the actual footage of the failure. Now just let me show you what I'm talking about. Here it's going down, and notice it's going to stop right there. OK? And that's way above any fire. The fires were all floor 13 and below. So it wasn't a fire that caused that either. Okay, so this is a second global simulation in perspective one that I want to show you. Here, I'm not cutting them off at floor 13. I mean, I'm cutting them off at floor 19. Okay, what does that look like as an example? Here is what we're about to see, different perspective. And if it is. Okay, second collapse, global collapse perspective two. Here we're going to show you a videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. And then progressive collapse simulation for NIST assumption. Now here's where we, what we were doing was showing you what we found. What I'm going to do is share with you uh, what NIST said had to happen, and we're going to show you our, the response, computer response to that, OK? The simulation was based on this assumption that column 79 buckled at floor 13, which led to the global failure of the building. The progressive collapse was simulated with the help of static analysis by progressively taking away those columns that failed. So when you take out some columns out, the load's still there, it's got to be taken by something else, right? And so we progressively took them out and took them out and took them out to get a handle on what it looked like. So here's where we started with the whole three-dimensional building. And here's what 
it started to happen by taking them out. So it wasn't the collapse we see. It wasn't the collapse that they showed on their, their computer. But this is what, if you take the story and put it into the computer models, this is what you're going to end up seeing, tilting, which is what I was pretty confident I was going to see when on the first day I started this and looked at that centroid issue because I'd done enough high-rise buildings to know that you know you, they're not wanting to fail straight down unless they are uniformly distributed straight down, straight down. So the analysis was based on this assumption of column 79 buckling at 413. The static analysis started by failing column 79, 80, and 81. And even though the, through the anal analyzed axial forces it didn't exceed their design load capacity, you're going to see green circles. What I'm getting ready to do is share with you, green circles mean it didn't exceed the capacity. Red circles means uh, the columns exceeded their design load capacity. So here we go. There's three columns that did what? Exceeded or did not exceed? Did not, right? So we don't see anything happening yet. Still, here is, uh, again, nothing failed at column 79, 80, and 81 were removed, but column 76, 77, and 80 were removed to initiate progressive collapse. We took them out anyway, all right? Here's the look at the floor system, if you look at it from the side view, and then you begin to take these out as you move, move forward. So um, <coughs> some of the columns started to fail and were significantly uh, signified by the red. And then uh, the green circles, again, signify the axial load that didn't exceed the column load capacity. We keep taking them out, taking them out. Now there's no columns left. And there's nothing there to carry the load. And here, uh, by more than failing five, it can be seen that it does not match the video. So here is what the building would look like in a tip mode. And that would be another view of that failure and so forth. OK. so. That's my story. Here's the summary and conclusions, and then I'll let you go home and eat. So WTC7 did not fail due to fire. WTC7 did not experience a progressive collapse. WTC7 came down as a global failure in free fall. The penthouse failed when column 79 lost its support at near floor 45 above the fire. And this failure occurred approximately five and a half seconds before all the inner core columns fail lower down in the building. After the interior core columns failed, 1.3 seconds later, all the exterior columns at that same floor level failed. We do know that more than one possibility could have occurred to give you almost identically the same thing. We know from floor 13 to 19 for sure we could simulate that very easily. We, while the failure could have occurred over eight floors at various heights of the building, video footage but showing floor 17 to 47 moving forward or downward as a unit suggests the failure occurred at or below 6 to 16th floor. That's just to put it together. Okay, so are there any questions? I apologize for taking your evening.